Okay, so with so many new cybersecurity certifications popping up in the last few years, I wanted to make this video on the cybersecurity certifications that just aren't really worth it. On this channel, I've reviewed many, many cybersecurity certifications, and I'm going to be basing this list off of three factors. Number one is, of course, pricing. There are some certifications that are very, very expensive and may not be worth the money, personally, from my opinion. Again, don't come for me in the comments. Actually, I'm kidding. Feel free to tell me your opinions in the comments. I would love to hear them. Number two is the time it takes to study for that certification. I'm sure you guys have heard of certifications that can take up to six months to study for. And personally, that is where I draw the line in terms of how worth it a certification is. But of course, that'll also change depending on your study plan. And finally, factor number three is the material that is on the exam. Is it relevant? Is it important? Is it hands-on? So these are the factors we'll be judging these certifications on. Number one on this list is GIAC certifications. Now I've actually included the GIAC GSEC certification as part of my cybersecurity beginner certifications list that I've made in the past. And firstly, this is a highly accredited certification for cybersecurity, but the main downside, if you know anything about GX certifications, is around the cost. So GX certifications are known to be some of the most expensive certifications in the field, and they are backed by the SANS Institute, which is a very large organization in the cybersecurity space. So GX certifications are well known by HR and hiring managers and recruiters, but it is more than double the price of a Security Plus certification, even triple the price depending on the exam that you take, and not to mention that your trainings are in the thousands of dollars range. So if you have a chance to take the GIAC certification, if you're already part of a company and your company is willing to help you pay for the certification and the training that it takes to pass the certification, then yes, that could probably be worth it for you. But in general, GX certifications, I think, are just very expensive for the typical person who is just starting out, specifically the GX GSEC certification, which is known to be a beginner level cybersecurity certification. I would often compare this to the CompTIA Security Plus, which I know the exam fee is also around $400, which is pretty pricey, and I'm not gonna lie, but nowhere near as pricey as the GX certifications. And if you are looking for a cybersecurity certification that meets the Department of Defense Directive 8140, then the Security Plus also fulfills that requirement. So I would still choose the Security Plus over the GX GSEC certification. In terms of the material covered on the exam, I do think it's a pretty broad range for a generalist certification. But from what I've heard about GX certifications is that oftentimes it's best practice to take the official GX training and exam preparation through their organization compared to the Security Plus, which I just bought a textbook for 30 bucks. I think I rented it actually for 30 bucks. And that was the bulk of my exam prep compared to a GX certification prep course that'll most likely cost thousands of dollars to be able to help you fully prepare. It also makes sense why a lot of people I know who go for GX certifications are typically already employed and their company is basically helping them pay for the full amount or at least part of it. All right, number two on this list is the CEH, which is the Certified Ethical Hacking Certification. So if you've been interested in a red teaming role, an ethical hacking role, you've definitely heard of the certification. It is one of the most buzzword certifications that are out there for red teamers. And I do know ethical hackers who have the CEH, but one thing to note and something that the CEH certification has come under a lot of fire for the past few years is the fact that their exam format is primarily multiple choice based questions. Now, if you can compare this to other ethical hacking certifications, popular ones like the OSCP, or even the new Hack the Box CPTS certification, you know that this is not really the norm because both of those certifications are very hands-on technical and the exams to pass those certifications actually require you to use your ethical hacking skills rather than just answering questions about ethical hacking through multiple choice questions. So the practical side of ethical hacking is not really tested as part of the CEH certification, which is why many people are opting in for other certifications that are definitely growing in popularity. Now, from a hiring perspective, it's going to take a bit of time for recruiters and HR to see that, hey, the CEH is phasing out and these are the new certifications that are going to be important to look for in a candidate's resume. But right now, I do still see the CEH as a certification that is sought after for ethical hacking roles, but you're also going to start seeing a lot more OSCP and the Hack the Box CPTS certification that is really gaining a lot of ground. Even Network Truck is preparing for the certification. And and that to me was pretty big news. So I do think this certification is going to really start growing in popularity. And in turn, I do think the CEH, if they don't change their exam format or add something different or do something to keep up with the industry trends and new certifications, then they're probably going to get phased out in the next few years. From what I've seen, I don't think the EC Council is planning on changing the CEH exam anytime soon, but they may surprise us considering all the new pen testing and ethical hacking certifications that are coming out that have really advanced practical hands-on exams. So the primary factor that puts the CEH on this list is really around the exam itself. Another thing to note is the price of the CEH exam voucher. Now this varies depending on if you buy their training or not, which again is going to be a few thousand dollars if you go for the official training, but just the Pearson View exam voucher is going to cost you about $1,200 
dollars. That is a lot of money. And there are also various fees like administration fees, application fees, an annual membership fee. I believe if you buy their official prep course, then in some cases the exam voucher itself can come free because you already spent thousands of dollars on the exam training. But basically it's pretty expensive. Since the CEH exam is multiple choice, you can technically study for it and pass it pretty quickly if you already have some baseline ethical hacking knowledge. But the downsides of the price and what the exam actually consists of and what the exam format is don't make this exam worth it if you're looking to start a career in ethical hacking. But as a cybersecurity professional, not only are you protecting the data of companies, you also have to worry about keeping your account and data secure online. And as the new school year kicks off, it's important to get back into the swing of things, not just with schedules and assignments, but with securing your online accounts too. And I know keeping track of your passwords and account information online isn't the most exciting thing, but it is important if you're planning to start a career in cybersecurity. And that is where Keeper Security comes in. Keeper makes it simple and easy to create and store your passwords securely in a personal password manager that you can access anytime, anywhere, and on any device. Whether it's you or someone else in your life who is gearing up for the new school year, Keeper can help make sure that your accounts stay secure by using Keeper's built-in password generator to create strong and unique passwords stored in your encrypted vault. Then you can use Keeper Fill to automatically fill your credentials the next time you log into your account on any device. And not only can you store passwords, you can also store other important information like credit cards, your passport, and personal notes and files securely. Make your life easier with Keeper and you can get it half off using my code with Sandra, or you can try it for free with a 30-day free trial using the link in my description or at keeper.io slash with Sandra. Thank you to Keeper for sponsoring this portion of the video and let's get back to the rest of the topics. All right, next up on this list is the CompTIA A+. Now, before you guys start bringing out the pitchforks, hear me out. I personally think the CompTIA A+, certification isn't worth it if you're planning on using the A plus as a first step before going for your security plus and trying to start your career in cybersecurity. It'd be different if you were going for a career in IT first and then going to cybersecurity. But I know a lot of people who are new to both fields and, and they know they wanna go straight into cybersecurity, but take the A plus first as a sort of primer for the CompTIA security plus. And personally, I'll tell you first why it's not worth it because the CompTIA A plus consists of two exams and that also means two exam fees. And, and if you combine the two exam fees for the CompTIA A+, that already costs more than the CompTIA Security+, Plus, which is already 400 something dollars. You're basically going to be spending around 500 something to 400 something on both of these certification exams, as well as doubling your study time, probably tripling it because there are two exams for the A+, basically paying $1,000 for these two certifications, the A+, and the Security+. Plus. It's really not going to help you that much. I think it just doubles the money that you spend and doubles the time that you spend studying. If you want to start a career in cybersecurity, you don't need to get your CompTIA A+, certification. I would start with the Security+, Plus and get as much hands-on training as you can through technical cybersecurity projects, job simulations, which by the way, I recently found out about this website that does free internship simulations for technical jobs and it's called Forage. It's free. You guys can check it out. I'll link it in my description below. And I've already shared this on my Instagram at Cyber with Sandra, where I share a lot more real-time cybersecurity career resources compared to these YouTube videos because it's just a lot faster to edit a 30-second video compared to a 10-minute video. So feel free to follow on Instagram or even LinkedIn for more real-time updates. But again, I know that when you're just starting out, the cost of certifications is going to be the biggest blocker in terms of getting someone in, especially when you think about the fact that you have to take three exams and chances are if you fail one of them, that's an additional few hundred dollars to retake that exam again. Personally, I just don't think it's worth it unless you do want to start your career in IT before pivoting into cybersecurity. Otherwise, the A plus just doesn't make sense for a security analyst to get. If you're already paying for a security plus and any other certifications or courses or online labs and technical projects that you're going to be adding onto your resume, the A plus isn't going to do as much for you. If you're already gonna get your security plus and focus more on getting those hands-on cybersecurity technical projects on your resume. And if you are looking for IT training, then the IT course that I recommend is Josh Matacor's IT course on course careers. He also started his career in IT before transitioning into cybersecurity. And this course basically gives you the rundown on everything that you need to know on Azure Active Directory, the whole help desk setup, and it actually provides hands-on training and labs for you to work on and to add that experience onto your resume. You can also get $50 off the entire course using the link in my description. And that course I personally do think is very worth it, especially considering that Josh also does interviews of his students who have graduated from that course and have been able to find a job just based on what they learned from course careers. I'm sure I can add many other cybersecurity certifications to this list, but one thing I want to call out is the fact that 
You can't just rely on a cybersecurity certification to help you start a career in cyber. There's a lot of other things that go into it, and specifically, it comes down to how much you stand out against other candidates who are also looking for a job in cybersecurity. If you're coming in with zero background, zero experience, whether it be internship or anything else, then I would really be focusing most of your time on cybersecurity projects and getting hands-on experience. This means building your own cybersecurity home lab, building your own SIEM, doing capture the flag challenges, participating and ranking in capture the flags or CTFs, going to in-person events like B-sides or cybersecurity conferences, creating your own intrusion detection system, building your own phishing attack simulator. By the way, these are projects that I recently shared on a LinkedIn post. And these project walkthroughs I found online are completely free. So you can do these with free tooling. Honestly, what you need the most is getting those technical skills and hands-on projects on your resume more than just a one-liner on passing your XYZ certification. Now, certifications are definitely important, but I feel like there's a lot more emphasis put on them now more than ever because the job market is very competitive and HR is looking for certain keywords and certain things on people's resumes. And not to mention that you're probably being stacked against people with years of experience and training who may have been laid off in the recent tech recession, which also adds another layer of competitiveness to this job market. But I recommend not getting too caught up on the hamster wheel that is certifications. I know people on LinkedIn who have an entire alphabet behind their name with five to seven certifications. And I personally don't think that is very necessary, especially if you're just starting out. If anything, I would think having a generalist certification and maybe one or two additional courses or certs that you might want to get, but you should make it your goal not to get too caught up on the certifications and the credentials compared to the actual hands-on experience and what you can say in an interview. If an interviewer asks you about your experience with SIMs, it will not be relevant for you to answer saying that you answered a CompTIA Security Plus question on SIMs and got it correct. You know, that would just not be relevant, but it would be different if you had your own home lab and you build your own SIM from scratch using open source tooling. That is a very common cybersecurity project for beginners that I really recommend you doing. I can also link a few resources in my description, but with that piece of experience, you can actually talk about it with an interviewer, talk about any troubles that you face, any troubleshooting you had to do, what you learned from the project, how you might do things differently if you were to set it up now with what you already know. This is one of the biggest reasons why hands-on experience is always going to trump just just knowing the basics and knowing the knowledge because you're actually doing the hands-on work. Now, again, I'm not saying that certifications are useless and that you should never go for them. I know people also feel that way. There are people I know with 20 plus years of experience who have zero certifications and are really, really good at their jobs. But nowadays, if you want to get into cybersecurity, I do think at least having one certification, one that is well known and accredited and respected in the field will be really helpful to you. But again, hands-on training is still going to be really important no matter where you are in your career. And by the way, if you're looking for a cybersecurity bootcamp, the one that I recommend is the Springboard Cybersecurity Bootcamp that has a job guarantee if you qualify. And basically, if you don't find a job within a certain amount of time after graduating from the bootcamp, you get your full tuition refunded, which takes a lot of the risk out of enrolling in a cybersecurity bootcamp. They provide you with hands-on training and the foundations for what you need to start a cybersecurity career with hands-on labs and technical experience, as well as career guidance with a mentor and career coaching. If you're interested, you can also get $1,000 off the entire bootcamp using my code with Sandra. It is also linked in my description below. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if there are any other cybersecurity certifications that you don't think are worth it and adding it to this list in the comments below. Let me know what you think about the ones on this list and, and don't forget to join the discussion on Discord, which is also linked in my description where we discuss all things cybersecurity careers, certifications, job opportunities, etc. If this video was helpful to you, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. I post videos every week and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.